so a lot of people want to know like how did I have the confidence to raise my prices how did I get to that level um, and how do you reach that market of people who can spend that money so I'm gonna try not to get into like too deep of a like branding conversation here because I feel like this could be like a lot of like an entire like hour-long follow-up so I'll try to stay top level but like pricing is so loaded and so messy and um, and everyone has like a lot of feelings about it so um, yeah so I think first of all like there is this misnomer between artists that there are these like unspoken rules about how to price your work that you start off free and then you starve for a while and then somebody comes along and gives you permission to raise your prices and then all of a sudden you're a sensation and everybody collects you and then you die and your work sells for millions and like great but you're dead who cares so like that is total bullshit there is no rule like there's no rules about how price how do you price your work and the fact that we all believe that we have to start off selling our work for like basically nothing and starving is just like it's it's not true and i don't know why we all believe that but like it's just not true so it's like just stop believing that <laughs> i mean it took me a while to like break that sort of mental like being an artist means starving belief but like it's not true it doesn't it doesn't have to be true so um yeah so that's that's number one there are no rules let that go um so number two like just from like a really practical standpoint um if you want to i talked about this before but like if you want to make making art your full-time job figure out how much money you need to make and then reverse engineer it from there and figure out how to price your work from there. Like that's how I started. I came from a design background where I build my time in 15 minute increments. And so I already kind of knew that like I had to build 20 hours a week at $125 an hour to make my nut. And that was just like, that was the minimum. That was what I had to make. So the people that were able to pay that were who I worked with and it worked and that's like I know that seems kind of crazy but um, you have to figure out like you have to figure out what you need to make so um, and then price your work accordingly when I started out I don't think I even sold anything for less than $800 and that was like my very like bare bones basement minimum um, and I have gone up from there so that's one like um, figuring out figuring out how to price your work don't price it based on what you think people can afford price it based on what you have to make in order to make art period um, <laughs> I know people are gonna argue with me about that but like do that I'm, I'm serious um, okay so from the entirely other side of the coin there's like there's that sort of like practical thing, but then there's also this like belief of in the value of your own work. If you don't believe that your work can sell for $2,000 or $5,000 or $10,000, then nobody's gonna buy it for that much because if you don't believe it, then why will anybody else? That was the, that was like the thing that I had to get over and past in pricing the Jayhawks for $25,000 a piece and the way that I did that and the reason I did that was um, a couple of things. So number one, I knew that they were worth that because I saw those images as becoming ubiquitous with all KU alumni, that everyone was going to want one and that someday when people, you know, thousands and thousands of people had them, they would see those originals and be like, wow, there's only one of those and there's thousands of these and that's the original. That's so cool. They are worth that. And I believed that and that's and so that was like I had to get over that and believe that and then other people believed that too because I put the price tag on it I stood behind it I talked about it confidently and so that was that was one big part of it was just believing it myself um, a second part of it was putting them and putting some like backing behind that. So when I displayed them, they were in a watch store and that was a partnership. And I'll talk about partnerships like in the next point I'm gonna make. Um, and so they were in a store where somebody was selling $8,000 watches. So they were like 
the the perception was already like we were bringing in people into an environment where there were already uh, luxury items and this was also a luxury item and so it it was given credibility because I didn't really have it myself yet I needed to I needed to sort of like fly on the coattails of somebody else's credibility in order to make it make sense that these paintings were $25,000. I couldn't just like, um, I mean, I could have, it probably, I don't know if it would have worked, but I couldn't just put them like in a coffee shop for $25,000. That's not how, like the perception wouldn't have worked that way. So, um, so that, you know, that's another piece of it too. Um, so, like from a this is I like I don't want to sound too like the secret here <laughs> so I'll like try to be as uh, practical as possible but like you have to ask you have to know what you want and then ask for it and you have to be really confident when you do that and no one's gonna like come to your door and be like hey I hear there's like a really talented artist here who is really grossly underpaid and I would love to come and like rescue you and buy all your work and raise your prices and build you a studio and put you on the Today Show. Like that is not how success works. That's not how PR works at all. It's all about hustling for yourself and figuring out like, I want to sell my work for this amount. I want to be on this news show. I want to be in this newspaper. I want to sell my work to this person. Like saying it out loud, writing it down, telling it to other people and then asking for it and then like, asking for it over and over and over and over and over again until it happens um, and being like really steadfast in your pursuit of what you want and like what you need like that that has to be the way that you operate and that's like a confidence thing and um, you know that's really that's something I've had to work on but I think that's that's like a huge part of um, pricing your work in in that way is is about your confidence